something that d- did come across the or come up for this season. Um, the FIA has ditched the Max Verstappen super license rule. Um, obviously, we all know this is for Kimi and Tonelli, but for those of you who don't know, the Max Verstappen super license rule was that like you couldn't get your super license until you turned eighteen. Um, Max and have a valid that. road license, right? And have a valid road license. Thank you for that caveat, Max Verstappen. You know, has, um, infamously, I guess, um, made them create that rule. But now they're repealing it, so you no longer need to have those requirements. I want to push back a little bit. They're not repealing it. They're basically adding a caveat saying, this is the rule. Thank you. Yeah, this is the rule. But if we get pestered enough by a team principal who really wants an under 18 in the car, we might give in if they are, you know, good enough and cute enough and likable enough and capable enough. I don't know. It's it's really, you know, Toto Wolf badgered the FIA into doing this, in my personal opinion. Um, and it's it's just, you know, it, what it's it's not a bad thing because I don't think it's necessary. You know, like I don't think under eighteen phenoms are bad for the sport. Um, I just, you know, they do have to be careful and make sure that this is an under eighteen phenom who is actually really good. And my concern here is Kimi Antonelli has not necessarily been performing well in these opening weeks of Formula Two. Um, he's right. not the he's not one of the front runners right now in the standings. He, you know, he's been better this last couple of races, but not. He, he hasn't been, you know, standing out to, to the point where I would be as comfortable as, you know, the Mercedes camp is in implying that he's their choice for 2025. Yeah. See, I get that. But F2 is so different than F1. Also that, yes. And like, I, I'm glad to see this change so that we can see him in a young driver's, you know, FP1 session. Um, and see what he can actually do in an F1 car. I don't know if he'll actually get one this year. I mean, it's assumed that he will. I'm sure he will. But until he's in that car. Because, um, again, like, Ollie Behrman isn't, like, blowing everyone's socks off in F2. But he placed, you Correct. know, P7 um, when he took over for Carlos. So I think there's a lot of movement there. But I – okay, so I know that you – and. I'm just going to keep talking on my tangent, but because I'm very against Kimmy coming to the grid. I know that. Agreed. uh, Yeah. But I don't think Mercedes will pick him up. It's just, it's too established of a team and Toto like, is just Toto. There's no other explanation needed. He's always used Williams as the feeder team. Like, I don't see how you put him in a car with George. Also, because can you imagine that dynamic? Like, George, we made you go to Williams for years and suffer. And now you're finally coming to Mercedes and we're just going to pick Kimmy up. Like, George, that team dynamic, one, is going to fall apart. But I just don't think that's in the team's nature to pick up an 18-year-old and, you know, give him a Right, which is, which is right. It's really interesting to me that, you know, what, from what we know of recent Mercedes history, which obviously they've had Lewis for a hundred years, um, you know, Valtteri came to them with a lot of experience and George is George. Um, but then you have, you know, all of a sudden they're, they're scrapping everything they've done, you know, basically since they returned to formula one after the Braun um, era and they, you know, they're, they're bringing on a, a fresh new rookie. Um, and I, you know, the, I think that the news of like them scrapping the super or adding a caveat to the super license role was really funny because all of a sudden it's like you know we, we'll see in Antonelli as soon as Monza and then all of a sudden we'll see Antonelli as soon as Spain and I'm like Spain is in four days calm down um but the other important part of this tweak in the rules is this is not to oust Logan Sargent for the second half of the season in my opinion um this is to get Antonelli in the car um for free practice sessions prior to his birthday which is August 25th of this year um so until so Right now, he's probably on the books for free practice sessions um, later in the season, like most teams do their rookie sessions. Obviously, when you have a rookie who is, you know, predicted to be on the grid the following year, they want to get a lot more experience as early as possible. So that that is why Mercedes made this push to get him in 
before his 18th birthday, but it's just, it's such huge news because it's Antonelli. He's the second coming of Michael Schumacher in a Mercedes car and or in, as an Italian or whatever you want to say it. But I still, I agree with you. I don't think this is the right call. That said, I do think that this is the call ultimately that Mercedes will make. And I don't think it's the right choice. I don't know. I, I'm holding out and I trust Toto to make a different decision, but I don't know. Like if he, if he's there, he's there. And it's like, well, you know, you're stuck with him for a year or whatever. But I just, I understand the change in the rule. I think it's maybe something that Toto pitched them of like, hey, what if we're in this situation? Like, just consider the the change. But like you said, all, a lot of the uh, young driver free practice sessions happen in the later half of this season. And, you know, July, August-ish is the summer break. And I don't see him doing a session before the summer break. So, like, what's the point of this if it was only for Kimmy? You know what I mean? Right, right. Which is that that doesn't make sense because, you know, I don't really know the ages of the other, um, you know, F2 phenoms. And you said that F2 is a completely different beast from F1. And we've already discussed that um, at this point, F2 might not actually be doing enough to develop, you know, drivers to go into Formula One. Um, but I I really just, you know, if if it's not to get Antonelli in by at least Monza to get him in his, in his home race, his home country, I don't know why we went, went through this entire exercise. And, you know, obviously it's like, why are we making such a big deal of, out of something that isn't even on the books? Well, that or that it could just be them like making updates and changes, but I don't know why they would do it mid-season if it wasn't for something like right. that. Right. Exactly. Watch, like, just... like Antonelli doesn't do any free practice, free practice sessions this year, like at all. And it's like, everyone's been talking about all of this for absolutely no reason. Yeah. It's like, whatever happened to Frederick me. Vesti, who is also a Mercedes junior driver, um, who's also, you know, a pretty, you know, he, I think he won for me, or he, he was like the top something in, in F2 last year. Like he was really good. And like, you know, he was like all anyone talked about until Antonelli moved up to, to F2. And it's like, oh, Antonelli is the second coming, um, which is, you know, not to say that like Antonelli is not a good driver. He, he, he has torn it up in basically every junior motorsport series he has been in. So he's a very good driver. He's very promising. He will have a great career in Formula One. I just think it's too soon. Yeah. No, I completely agree. 